हेलो दोस्तों इस वीडियो में हम देखेंगे बायोडाइवर्सिटी के बारे में वी मस्ट हैव सीन वेराइटी ऑफ ग्रास प्लांट्स बुशेस ट्रीज बर्ड्स एनिमल्स अराउंड अस वी रियरली ऑन दिस डाइवर्सिटी ऑफ वी लिव ऑन दिस डाइवर्सिटी ऑफ प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स ऑल द प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स प्रोवाइड अस फूड फूल मेडिसिन एंड अदर एसेंशियल्स Without which we cannot live. These species are the product of more than four billion years of evolution. This rich biodiversity is being lost at an alarming rate, largely because of human activities. However, there are many things that each one of us can contribute in preserving these species. Mm -hmm. plants animals and other living organisms there are lots of thing which we can do for saving our precious diversity so what is biodiversity biodiversity is a short form of biological diversity in simple terms biodiversity is the total number of genes species ecosystems of a region it includes genetic diversity species diversity and ecosystem diversity in which plants and animals continue constitute only small components of diversity we have also on some lots of invisible microorganisms constitute a large components of biodiversity these are the some pictures these are the constitu constituents of biodiversity birds animals we human being some micro organisms fruits plants animals etc so what is genes the basis the basic biological unit of heredity gene kya hai the basic or biological unit of heredity genes of an individual belonging to the same species are similar and genes control the characteristic of particular species ye to gaya gene species kya hai a group of very similar having some common characteristic or qualities and capable of interbreeding is called species a group of very similar having some common characteristics और क्वालिटीज एंड कैपेबल ऑफ इंटरब्रीडिंग इको सिस्टम क्या है एनी सेगमेंट ऑफ द लैंडस्केप दैट इंक्लूड्स बायोटिक बायोटिक मीन्स लिविंग एंड एबायोटिक नॉन लिविंग कंपोनेंट्स इज नोन एज इको सिस्टम इन द एरिया व्हिच बोथ बायोटिक एंड एबायोटिक थिंग्स आर अवेलेबल इज कॉल्ड इको so status of biodiversity in india biodiversity increases as we move from the poles towards equators from poles towards equator equators mein zyada biodiversity paaye jate hain to india is located between 8 degree 4 minute north se lekar 37 degree 6 minute north latitudes so it is basically situated in tropical area and latitudes 68 degree 7 minute east to 97 degree 25 east longitude ye to gaya latitudinal extent 8 degree 4 minute north se lekar 37 degree 6 minute north to 968 degree 7 minute east se lekar 97 degree 25 minute east ye hai longitudinal extent due to this position india has such a rich biodiversity all the india has only 2.42% of the world's land india world ka 2.42% sayar karta hai to itni kam amount hone ke baad bhi india shares india contribution is most India's contribution to the world's biodiversity is approximately 8% of the total number of species which is estimated to be 1.75 million okay
1.75 million kis ke according as per global biodiversity assessment of united nations environment program of 1995 okay 6 percent of the world species are found in india 6 percent of the world species are found in india 45,000 plant species comprising about 12 percent of world's flora are found in indian forests 45,000 की प्रजाति 45,000 प्रजाति का उद्भिद पाया जाता है इंडिया में जो कि है विश्व का 12 प्रतिशत 2 ऑफ द 2 ऑफ द 12 बायोडायवर्सिटी हॉटस्पॉट्स इन द वर्ल्ड आर इन इंडिया 2 बायोडायवर्सिटी हॉटस्पॉट क्या-क्या है इंडिया में नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न रीजन एंड वेस्टर्न घाट्स ओके तो क्या होता है बायोडायवर्सिटी हॉटस्पॉट बायोडायवर्सिटी हॉटस्पॉट एक ऐसा स्थान होता है एक ऐसा प्लेस होता है ए रीजन विद द हाई लेवल ऑफ एंडेमिक स्पीशीज एंडेमिक स्पीशीज आर दो स्पीशीज दैट आर फाउंड इन ए सर्टेन लिमिटेड एरिया एंडेमिक स्पीशीज को क्या बोला जाता है स्थानिक प्रजाति जो प्रजाति का उद्भिद हो या पशु हो या पक्षी जो केवल एक ही स्थान में स्थान पे पाए जाते हैं इसको कहा जाता है एंडेमिक स्पीशीज तो इंडिया हैव टू बायोडायवर्सिटी हॉटस्पॉट्स वन इज नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न रीजन एंड अनदर वन इज वेस्टर्न घाट्स बायोडायवर्सिटी जहां पे हॉटस्पॉट किसको कहा जाता है जहां पे एंडेमिक स्पीशीज ज्यादा मात्रा में पाए जाते हैं मेगा बायोडायवर्सिटी ए यूनिक कॉम्बिनेशंस ऑफ डिफरेंट प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल स्पीशीज व्हिच is not available anywhere else so what are the significance of biodiversity biodiversity is fundamental to the existence of life on the earth its significance cannot be underestimated there are varieties of living things that exist in a given physical environment these are interdependent and interrelated in the form of an ecosystem okay ecosystem kya hai in interdependent and interrelated from interrelated or interdependent between organisms and their environment is called ecosystem we know that plants occurs in distinct groups of communities in areas having similar climatic conditions okay then the nature of vegetation in any area determines in determines the animal life okay the nature of vegetation in any area animals life when the vegetation of a place is altered animal life also changes and simultaneously it affects mankind loss of any components in the system adversely affects other components of the system we are an integral part of the ecosystem by cutting trees killing animals human beings lead to ecological imbalance how does the ecosystem get influenced by human beings we men doing uh, cutting trees and making climate change and it it led to disasters collect some articles from the newspaper magazines uh, which can help us in understanding human impact on ecosystem we must understand that all plants and animals in an area are interdependent and interrelated in their physical environment ecosystem is extremely valuable in different facets of human life which includes so what ecosystem provides us provides providing food water fiber fuel etc regulating of climate and disease for example people are suffering from cold and cough in winters and stomach infection in monsoon etc causes of causes of loss of biodiversity kya problem hoga agar biodiversity loss hoga to increased population and changing lifestyles leads to extensive commerce, commercial exploitation of natural resources by this result in loss of biodiversity Consequently, it is adversely affecting the ability of the nature to continue delivering the goods and service for 
human existence the loss of biodiversity affects not only the physical environment but also social cultural religious and spiritual well-being of human life biodiversity loss of plants and animals okay deforestation climate change hoga to climate kya hai long term account of various atmospheric conditions like temperature pressure humidity rainfall pollution bhi hoga okay over harvesting agar hum zyada pollution phailayenge to automatically uh, various health disasters come changes life through development increasing population also a serious threat to biologic the biodiversity of plants and biodiversity loss of plants and animals public policies commercial exploitations do you know united nations had proclaimed the year 2010 the international year of biodiversity point it can be helpful for all kind of examination united nations have pro- proclaimed the year 2010 the international year of biodiversity okay according to iucn international union for conservation of nature by 2010 around 18788 species out of 52070 so far assessed are threatened with extinction of the world's is 5490 mammals 70 are extinct 188 are critically endangered 540 endangered and 592 vulnerable amphibians are also in danger and danger of extinction amphibians kisko kaha jata hai those animals are can survive in water and land called amphibians are the most threatened groups of species these are the some datas which we have to remember tech skin shift extinction of individual species is destruction of natural habitats land use con- converse converger land use convergence forest ko reduce karke land bana diya jayega to agriculture ke liye ये भी तो एक बायोडाइवर्सिटी लॉस है ना इट लेड टू क्लाइमेट चेंज पोल्यूशन एंड डिग्रेडेशन इज कंटिन्यूंग एट एन अलार्मिंग रेट नेचुरल वेजिटेशन एंड वाइल्ड लाइफ इन आवर इकोसिस्टम वेजिटेशन एंड वाइल्ड लाइफ आर वेबल नाउ बिकॉज फॉर ह्यूमन इन आवर इको सिस्टम वेजिटेबल एंड वाइल्ड लाइफ आर मोस्ट मोस्ट वैल्यूएबल रिसोर्स वैल्यूएबल रिसोर्स वी ऑल नो दैट प्लांट्स प्रोवाइड अस विथ टिम्बर गिव शेल्टर्स टू मैन एंड एनिमल प्रोड्यूस द ऑक्सीजन द लाइफ गैस दैट वी ब्रीद प्रिवेंट सॉयल इरोजन एंड नेचुरल कलामिटीज सच एज फ्लॉड्स हाई स्पीड विंग्स एंड हेल्प इन स्टोरेज ऑफ अंडरग्राउंड वाटर गिव अस फ्रूट्स नॉट्स लाडेक्स टर्पेंटाइन ऑयल गॉम मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स एटसेट्रा ऑल्सो फ्रॉम ट्रीज वी मेक पेपर विच इज एसेंशियल फॉर आवर स्टडीज दीज आर सम ऑफ द इन्यूमरेबल यूजेस ऑफ प्लांट्स वाइल्ड लाइफ इनक्लूड्स एनिमल्स बर्ड्स इंसेक्ट्स रेप्टाइल्स एज वेल एज द आइक्रेटिक लाइफ फॉर्म्स दे प्रोवाइड अस मिल्क मीट हाइड्स एंड वूल इंसेक्ट्स लाइक बीज प्रोवाइड अस हनी help in pollination of flowers and have an important role to play as decomposers in the ecosystem the birds feed on insects and act as a decomposers as well vulture due to its ability to feed on dead livestock is a scavenger and considered a vital cleanser of the environment so life forms big or small all are integral in maintaining a balance in ecosystem natural vegetation in india as in any other part of the world natural vegetation of india is also determined by climate 
physiographic and soil factors if we look at the figure 11.3 we find that based on factors of temperature rainfall and topographic conditions india have diverse vegetation vegetation patterns as summarized below dense natural vegetation found in northeastern region northeastern states, states like uh, assam tripura meghalaya mizoram okay western ghats and andaman nicobar the northern plains and northwestern region suffers very scanty vegetation and is under cultivation the deccan region is full of scrubs and mixed deciduous forests deciduous forests are those forests the trees are shed their leaves once in a year is called deciduous forests sal is the sal mohua are the example of example of deciduous tree deciduous forest tree natural vegetation of india can broadly divided into these groups tropical evergreen forests those forests do not have do not those forests have trees they don't have and they don't shed their like uh, leaves are called tropical evergreen forests tropical deciduous forests thorn forest trial forests also known as kidney of the earth himalayan forests so what is tropical evergreen forest trees in these forest remains green all over all the year around all the year round as the climatic of the re region is warm and wet throughout the year the leaves of these trees do not fall in any particular season hence they are evergreen these forests are found in the areas having more than 200 semi of rainfall with a short dry season the trees reach height of to 60 meter or even more it has a dense and mixed vegetation of all kinds include trees scrubs climbers creepers epiphytes and ferns mm -hmm. giving it a multi layered structure hence their economic exploitation is not viable the number of species of trees is very large in a small areas trees like uh, rosewood ebony mahogany rubber jackwood and bamboo are the most are the important species in tropical evergreen forests in india this type of vegetation is found in the areas of where in the areas where heavy rainfall occurred in western ghats upper parts of assam and islands of lakshadweep and andaman nicobar hardwood from these forest used for furniture handicraft they prevent landslides and soil erosion then we have tropical deciduous forest it is in these forests shed their leaves once in a year that is why they are called tropical deciduous forests these are some widespread forests of india these forests are found in the areas receiving annual rainfall between 75 to 200 cm in a tropical evergreen forest 200 cm of rainfall required in tropical deciduous forests forests 75 to 200 cm rainfall required as far as the physical distribution of this type of forests concerned they are found in the entire country excluding the part of deccan plateau northeastern region western ghats and eastern ghats eastern coasts these forests have been subject to extensive clearance by men for the purpose of cultivation still some patches of natural vegetations vegetation are found along the foothills of himalayas hilly regions of peninsular so what is peninsular peninsulas peninsular peninsula are those land which surrounded by surrounded three sides surrounded by water on three sides are called peninsula and central part of the country on the basis of the availability of rainfall these forests are further divided into moist deciduous and dry deciduous okay the moist deciduous forests are found in the areas of rainfall between 100 to 200 cm under 2 to 200 cm moist in deciduous forests then we have so moist deciduous forests 
found in north northeastern states along the foothills of himalayas jharkhand odisha and chhattisgarh and eastern slopes of western ghat stick bamboo teak bamboo sal sisam sandalwood khair kushum arjun mahua jamun and mulberry are the important species of trees found in these forests then we have that dry deciduous forests okay 75 to 100 cm of rainfall occurred in dry deciduous forests these forests are found in the interior part of the peninsular plateau and the plains of uttar pradesh madhya pradesh and bihar tree species are species of this first tree species of these forests are teak sal people and neem then we have thorn forests this thorn forests forests found mainly in those areas which get seven less than 75 cm of rainfall annually 75 cm of rainfall are characterized by the natural vegetation of thorny trees and bushes climate of this part is mainly dry basically northwest part they are mainly found in northwestern india interior parts of the peninsular india including semi arid arid these are the what thorn forests okay semi arid areas of gujarat rajasthan madhya pradesh chatisgarh uttar pradesh haryana karnataka andhra pradesh and maharashtra vegetation of these forests is widely distributed in the form of small trees and bushes with deep roots the stems are succulent to conserve water leaves are mostly thick and small to minimize evaporation acacia euphorbias babul cacti cacti khair date and palms are commonly variety of trees in this type of vegetation then we have tidal forests also known as kidney of the earth as suggested by the name these forests are found in tidal creeks and swamps influenced by the tides and wetland topography these areas are characterized by mud silt and water accumulated on the surface roots and branches of the trees are submerged under water for a specific period of time there are also called mangrove forests mangroves mangroves are practically evergreen with thick leathery leaves such types of forests are found in the deltas of sundarban mahanadi and godavari krishna kaveri rivers and in the andaman and nicobar islands mangroves are sundari a type of tree found in found in tidal forests in coastal region mangroves or sundari is the common tree in sundarbans okay while palm coconut koira and agar are other important species of tidal forests it is interesting to know that this type of forests have it is interesting to know that this type of this tidal type of forests have remained away from the large scale commercial exploitation these forests are located along the coasts they provide protection against cyclones then we have himalayan forests as is evident by the name that these forests are mainly found in the mountainous region of the himalayas the decreasing in temperature and increasing in altitude lead to varied types of vegetation depending upon the factors like slope of the mountains and sun rays receiving sites the ecosystem is highly fragile himalayan forests have been exploited in many ways in recent decades areas with relatively low latitudes up to 1000 meters in 1000 meters there are there 36.4 degrees degrees in temperature 6.4 degree temperature decrease in 1000 meters that is 1 km warm climate and good amount of rainfall are characterized dense vegetation cover these 
areas with relatively low latitudes that is 1000 meters warm climate and good amount of rainfall characterized by dense vegetation cover these areas look like tropical forests and tropical forests sal and bamboo are main species in these areas between the ele elevation of 1000 to 2000 meters evergreen broad leaf oak oak and chestnut are the common species found in these forests in eastern himalayas in the eastern Hima himalayas the same elevation is occupied by subtropical pine forests Cheer is common species Cheer is common species found in this part most temperate forests forest in himalayas are found between elevation kya? moist temperate forest in himalayas found between elevation of 1500 to 3500 meters which receives annual rainfall in the range of 100 to 200 to 50 centimeter oak laurel chestnut cedar silver fir spruce rodent rhododendron and deodar are the main species found in this part of himalayas they have been widely exploited for the for their timber alpine forests found in himalayas are himalayas at the height of between 3000 to 3800 meters with large and extensive highland grassland and sparsely distributed pine birch birch silver fir and rhododendron kya rhododendron trees wildlife in india we have studied earlier in the lesson due to unique geographical position in india geographical position india is rich in wildlife wildlife of india is great natural heritage it is estimated about 80 percent of all known plant and animal species on the earth are found in india Many plants synthesize substances that are useful to maintenance of health in humans and other animals. In recent decades, humans' encroachment has forced a threat to India's wildlife. In response to this, the system of national park, wildlife sanctuaries, and protected areas first established in 1935 during British Raj has substantially expanded through Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Efforts are being made to protect and preserve biological diversity of our country under various programs. India has preserved vast tracts of natural habitats, birds and plants in its 551 wildlife sanctuary 96. This number has increased recently, but this is increased. Now it has increased in wildlife sanctuaries, mein, national parks, mein, Ramsar sites. Mein. 18 biosphere reserve abhi hai ye yahan pe hai 15 33 botanical gardens okay ye sab nahi padhna hai humko deer parks safari parks in india for the purpose of effective conservation of natural habitats of wildlife special schemes like project tiger introduced in 1973 and project elephant introduced in 1992 every year Ele uh, elephant day celebrated in uh, august 12 make awareness about the conservation and protection of elephant okay these are very important as many species are at the brink of extinction however none of these efforts will be truly successful unless all indian recognize their role in conserve conserving biodiversity wildlife sanctuaries kya hai? the main objective of the wildlife sanctuaries is to ensure maintenance of viable population of wildlife and their de desired habitat. The wildlife sanctuaries in India are home to around 2,000 spe different species of birds, 3,500 species of mammals, and nearly 30,000 different kinds of insects, and more than 15,000 varieties of plants. Okay, these sanctuaries are these sanctuaries and forest reserves are home to several endangered species of animals and birds, like the Asiatic elephant. The Royal Bengal Tiger, the Snow Leopard. Snow Leopard is the state uh, animal of Jam uh, Jammu and Kashmir. Sorry, Ladakh. Ladakh. Ladakh state animal is Snow Leopard. 
the siberian crane many of the first reserved and wildlife sanctuaries of india famous for particular species of animals for instance kaziranga in assam is known for its known for the indian rhinoceros 100 rhinos periyar in kerala is famous for its elephants it is also to several migratory animals and birds like olive red lace sea turtles found in gahirmatha odisha siberian cranes and flamingos then what is national parks the purpose of establishing national park is to conserve the natural and historic objects and the wildlife and to provide for the enjoyment of the same in such manner and by such means as will have them on impaired for the enjoyment of future generation to protect to protect animals and birds animal birds and plants and there are national parks established by 1970s india only had five national parks in 1972 india enacted wildlife protection act to safeguard the habitats of conservation reliant species the two main objectives of the act are to provide protection to endangered species listed in the act and provide support to the conservation area of the country classified as national parks these are some wildlife sanctuaries and national parks nasigram situated in jammu and kashmir carbet first national park which it is established it was established in 1936 earlier it was known as heli national park but now it was known as ram ganga national park remember that point dudhwa in up kanha in mp bandipur actually badipur likha gaya lekin ye bandipur it was located in it is located in kannada periyar kerala bharatpur rajasthan different types of water birds found in bharatpur desert park rajasthan gir national park gujarat ये सब दिया गया है सुंदरवन वेस्ट बंगाल वेटलैंड्स ए वेटलैंड इज एन एरिया ऑफ लैंड वेयर सॉयल इज सेचुरेटेड विथ मॉइस्चर आइदर परमानेंटली और सीजनल सच एरियाज में ऑल्सो बी कवर्ड पार्शियली और कम्प्लीटली बाई सालो पुल्स ऑफ वाटर वेटलैंड्स इंक्लूड स्वाम्स मार्सेस एंड बॉक्स एमंग अदर्स द वाटर फाउंड इन वेटलैंड कैन बी सॉल्ट वाटर फ्रेश वाटर और ब्राकिस most importantly wetlands also serve as natural waste water purification system hence wetlands is known as kidney of the earth a tidal forest also tidal forest both tidal forest and wetlands are play important role to purify the waste water plant life around the wetlands include mangrove water lilies catalis sedges tamark black spruce cypress gum and many others animals life includes many different amphibians reptiles birds insects and mammals wetlands performs two important functions in relation to climate change they have mitigation effects through their ability to sink carbon and adaptation effects through their ability to store and regulate water the convention on wetlands of international importance that is ramsar convention we have now 75 ramsar sites in india in odisha we have five ramsar sites is an international treaty designed this ramsar conventions was held in 1971 every year uh, 2nd february is celebrated as wetlands day This Ramsar Convention is an international treaty designed to address globe, global concerns re- regarding wetlands loss and degradation. The primary purpose of the treaty is to list wetlands of international importance and to promote their wise wise use with the ultimate goal of preserving the world's wetlands. Methods include restricting access to the majority portion of wetlands areas as well as educating the public to combat combat to combat to fight the misconception that wetlands are wastelands wetlands are not wastelands wetlands are valuable resources for earth for us these are the some ramsar sites in india bhitarkanika 
मैंग्रोव्स ओडिशा चिलिका लेक ओडिशा रिसेंटली हिराकूद रिजर्वायर अनसुपा लेक देन वी हैव सातकोजिया सातकोशियागर्ज ऑल्सो इंक्लूडेड चिलिका लेक ओडिशा ईस्ट कलकत्ता वेस्ट बेंगल कोलेरू आंध्र प्रदेश लोकटाक मणिपुर इट वॉज द इट वॉज ओनली फ्लोटिंग नेशनल पार्क लॉ एक डॉक्टक लेक ये एक नेशनल पार्क भी है जो कि फ्लोटिंग नेशनल पार्क है तैरता हुआ नेशनल पार्क पॉइंट कालीमर तमिलनाडु पंगडम लेक हिमाचल प्रदेश सम लिस्ट बायोस्फीयर रिजर्व आर मल्टीपर्पज प्रोटेक्टेड एरियाज टू प्रिजर्व द जेनेटिक डाइवर्सिटी इन रिप्रेजेंटेटिव इकोसिस्टम द इंडियन गवर्नमेंट हैज एस्टाब्लिश्ड बायोस्फीयर रिजर्व स्विच प्रोटेक्टेड लार्जर एरियाज ऑफ नेचुरल हैबिटेट्स दैन नेशनल पार्क और वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी बायोस्फीयर रिजर्व इज लार्ज बिग नेशनल पार्क दिस दिस इज द वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी ये है इट इसको बोड़ा वाला को कहा जाएगा बायोस्फीयर रिजर्व ओके एंड ऑफन इंक्लूड वन और मोन नेशनल पार्क रिजर्व क्या कहा गया है बायोस्फीयर रिजर्व हुई प्रोटेक्ट लार्जर एरियाज ऑफ नेचुरल हैबिटेट्स दैन ए नेशनल वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरीज एंड ऑफन इंक्लूड वन और मोर नेशनल पार्क एंड और प्रिजर्व एलॉन्ग बोफोर जन्स दैट आर ओपन टू सम इकोनॉमिक यूजेस प्रोटेक्शन इज ग्रांटेड नॉट ओनली टू द फ्लोरा एंड फोना ऑफ द प्रोटेक्शन रीजन बट ऑल्सो टू द ह्यूमन कम्युनिटीज हु इनहेबिट दिस रीजन्स द मेन ऑब्जेक्टिव टू एस्टाब्लिश दैम आर टू कंजर्व डाइवर्सिटी एंड इंटीग्रिटी ऑफ द लाइफ ऑफ प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स एंड माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स टू प्रमोट इको फ्रेंडली सस्टेनेबल लाइफ इन द एरियाज एंड to promote ecological conservation research education awareness and training in the life of such areas these are some biosphere reserve list nilagiri tamil nadu gulf of mannar tamil nadu sundarban west bengal nadavi uttarakhand dihang dipang arunachal pradesh pachimari madhya pradesh shimlipal odisha achankar amarkantak madhya pradesh chatisgarh manas assam kanchenjunga sikkim kanchenjunga is a mixed unesco world heritage sites अगस्त में अलग केरला का ग्रेट ने खबर अंडमान एंड निकोबार नौकरी मेघालय दिव्य साइक आसम रान ऑफ कच गुजरात नीड ऑफ कंजर्वेशन टू द नीड ऑफ कंजर्वेशन ऑफ बायोडाइवर्सिटी वेजिटेशन इज की कंपोनेंट ऑफ बायोडाइवर्सिटी विदाउट वेजिटेशन द एनिमल एंड सम माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स वुड डाई फॉर लैक ऑफ हाइब्रिड फूड एंड ऑक्सीजन Plants root system hold the soil together, protecting from being blown away by the wind or washed away by water. Soil conservation. Vegetation plays a major role. These are the some benefits, or we can say benefits if we protect our biodiversity. Okay, take screenshot.